Great. Uh, thank you very much. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Paddy Kaur. I'm one of the co-founders at a company called Decision Fuel. Uh, the other co-founder, incidentally, is Colin Marson, who is over there at that table. Um, and we're based up in, in Hong Kong. I'll talk a little bit more about what we do in, in, in a second. Um, for today's talk, uh, we're trying to give a little bit of a perspective on uh, mobile market research in, in Asia. So we're based in Asia, we're focused on Asia, and we have a particular view about the potential for mobile market research. Um, so we'll be posing the question about, you know, firstly, is it moving mainstream and what does that look like? And in fact, even beyond that, is it not just moving mainstream, is it the next big thing in research or not? And what would that look like? And we'll try and put a bit of texture on that with some case studies that um, we've been working on with our clients around the region. So a little bit first about our, our company. Uh, Decision Fuel, uh, if you don't know it already, is a consumer insights platform. Uh, we're focused on, on mobile. And in particular, we're using mobile in bite-sized format. So we're using uh, quant, short, focused surveys um, to try and create a, a product that is very simple and fast and affordable for our clients um, and very uh, easy to use for uh, respondents as well. Um, our objective is to try to go from idea to insight using one of the, what we believe is one of the big features of, of mobile, which is uh, the speed, and to do that in less than 24 hours. So to go from a discussion point in a, in a client meeting where they recognize the need for data um, through to survey design, field work completed, analysis, and uh, results delivered within 24 hours. As I said, we're focused on Asia. We've, uh, we're working uh, in other parts of the world as well, but primarily um, in the markets of, of Asia. And to date, we're a young company. Uh, we're two years old. We launched um, our product in the middle of last year. And in terms of scale, we've had 10 million responses over our platform so far. And as we begin, uh, we thought it would be helpful to take a look at some recent data that suggests that regardless of what's happening with mobile research, um, at least in terms of mobile web usage in Asia, uh, that certainly seems to be moving mainstream. And if you look at some of the results here, one of the big indicators of that is that if you look at the over 35 age group, um, the difference between and the last quarter of 2011 and the last quarter of 2012 is that across these markets, both developed markets and emerging economies, um, we're seeing a, a big increase in the older demographic. And that's one sure sign that at least in terms of mobile web usage, uh, we're seeing that uh, take a sort of more, more mainstream role. And you know, alongside that, then obviously we're seeing that teen demographic. This is not to say that it's in decline, but at least in terms of proportion, uh, that teen demographic is, is less uh, the, 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 the demographic that's driving mobile web usage. So definitely we see mobile web usage from a consumer perspective being mainstream. Now, in terms of research itself, I think along what you would consider some metrics of you know, how do you measure what mainstream is? Yeah, mobile is, is making an impact. For one, there's certainly, what we're seeing in Asia, uh, a range of clients from MNCs through to local companies, through to nonprofits. Um, the, the, the full spectrum are taking, taking an interest. We're also seeing that in terms of the markets, yes, absolutely. Uh, for all of the key markets in Asia, uh, there, there, there are clients that are active and doing surveys over mobile and doing research over mobile, which is great news for us, but great news for the sector in general. And finally, another indicator that things are at least ready to go mainstream is that mobile is already being used in a variety of ways or being deployed in a variety of ways, which is, which is great. Now, all of that's all well and good, but I'm conscious that it is quite late in the day and to try and keep you lot engaged me talking through all of those general things is, is not gonna do that. So, and any likeness to our host for the day in this current slide is entirely. <laughs> um, so, what I thought we could do is take a, take a look at where is mobile headed? Is it the next big thing? And if it is the next big thing, what does that look like? And so, to start to do that, um, 
let's just take a look at some of the things that, at least for the market research providers in the room, we all spend a lot of time doing these things. And I just want to say that it is absolutely important that we continue to do those things in terms of building out our products and, and demonstrating the capabilities of mobile. So we need to have capable technology. We need to make sure that we're designing in quality. We need to make sure that we're having a regional presence in Asia in order to deliver across the region and uh, include quant and qual elements and so on. Having said that, on their own, these things are what you would call ne necessary but not sufficient for mobile to be the next big thing in research. And so our proposal is that from a, uh, from a mobile perspective and from mobile going truly mainstream, it isn't really about replicating standard market research, or at least not all the time. In fact, for mobile to go mainstream, we need to be embracing and celebrating what makes mobile unique and what makes it shine. There are some, several areas, in fact, where mobile can shine, where it's, it's uniquely capable. Our view is that small is beautiful when it comes to mobile. Mobile is not designed for doing long, unwieldy UNA studies, but it is excellent at doing short, bite-sized studies. Mobile, and this is not always a, a, a popular uh, view, but mobile also enables a, a good amount of automation, which in terms of uh, client need can also be exactly what they're looking for. Mobile is also, we believe, uniquely placed, and a lot of speakers have spoken about this already, um, to deliver insight very quickly. And that's at the, at the heart of what our, um, our survey uh, uh, mechanism is about. And I think it's what a lot of people are, are, uh, are offering and who are already active in the space. And finally, of course, uh, mobile allows, to, allows you access, gives you access when perhaps other methodologies um, would struggle. Sorry, finally, um, it also enables us to keep things simple. And I think our view is that you know, it's not something perhaps that's been talked about a lot today, but actually when we go and talk to clients, what they really like is the idea that this is not a complicated process, the idea that this is actually just distilling it down to the question that occurred to them yesterday in the meeting that they had, and that they'll be able to get an answer very soon to that question. And for us, I think that's something that mobile is very able to do and should be celebrated. So I want to take a look at some case studies from client work that we've been doing in the region uh, that starts to demonstrate maybe some of these attributes and helps to you know, perhaps indicate that the first baby steps towards at least moving mainstream and perhaps also moving to be the next big thing, uh, that that may be happening in, in Asia. The first one is, is going to uh, indicate that you know, it isn't about trying to recreate research that um, has been done by more traditional uh, methods for years. There's another case study looking at, and we've heard a lot about big data, which incidentally we're absolutely in favor of, but there, there is a take on big data that suggests that if you have a bite-sized, nimble alternative, it can help you make sense of what can be a crazy big data situation and, and very confusing. And finally, we also have a view that as far as mobile is concerned, Asia really is the part of the world that has the greatest potential to be leading the way, not following. And we believe quite strongly that that um, can and should be the case. Let's take a look at that, that first example. And in this one, uh, the, the end brand uh, was trying to, we were trying to understand on behalf of an agency uh, the morning coffee or the morning hot beverage situation. And in particular, uh, the idea was to you know, take a look at the time of day, uh, to slice the time uh, from 6 a.m. to 11 a.m. in the morning when people have their morning coffee, and to really sort of investigate that, explore you know, why, have, why have consumers made certain decisions about the drink that they're consuming, where are, are they, what's the context, and in particular, uh, you know, trying to uh, assign some sort of uh, uh, habit and, and uh, likelihood to continue that behavior. Uh, the client was particularly keen to access feature phone users as well as smartphone users. Our platform works across feature and smartphone, and they were interested in two specific cities, Beijing and Chengdu in, in China. 
And so our approach was effectively to create what we call pop-up ratings. And this was really using the benefits of mobile to get access to people at a specific point in time, at a specific point of consumption, and to use that to piece together a picture of effectively what the, the ratings picture, like a TV ratings picture, is like for morning coffee consumption. And the result was a very simple but very effective uh, measure of beverage consumption. And you can see an indication of the, the time slice nature. So every 15 minutes, we were deploying these surveys to uh, a new group of consumers, asking about their, their consumption context, asking about the decisions that they made, who they're with, um, and what brands they were affiliated to. And what we're effectively able to do, city by city, is build up a, a ratings picture over, over time, or the equivalent of a ratings picture. And so mobile being uniquely placed to, to do this. It's time specific. We were able to deploy the field work with a minimum of fuss. We were able to get very rapid response times. In fact, in context, during consumption or just after consumption responses. Um, and really to keep it very simple and convenient, not to overcomplicate what we were trying to do, just to go straight to the data. And mobile is better placed to do this sort of um, approach and, take, uh, and solve this sort of problem for the client than uh, other, uh, other platforms. I want to take a, a slightly different look now at another case that we've been involved with recently. So I'm not sure for you, those of you outside Asia, you may not be aware. Um, since November of last year, um, KFC in China um, has had a bit of an issue that it's been trying to manage through with um, uh, a food near scandal in terms of the sourcing of uh, its, uh, the chicken product that was going through its Chinese outlets. And in this case, um, and to just give you a little bit of context on that, so what was happening was uh, a news story broke that uh, additives were being put into the chicken that was being provided, um, and this then exploded into the, 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 the social networks and the Twitter sphere, and people were um, uh, talking a lot about it, both in broadcast media and in, in, in social media. And the, the, the client here was keen to understand, well, what impact is this having on the KFC brand? So this was a live story. It was a you know, active news item. They wanted to get impact information before it was no longer a news item and to give them a good perspective on you know, whether there was any lasting damage that was being done to the, the KFC brand. Um, so for us, what we were able to do was deploy our, um, our, our survey to just under 1,300 respondents. Um, it was using our existing panel, so we have mobile panels in several markets around the region. Um, and really, within much less than 24 hours, we were able to give uh, feedback on exactly what the issue was and how uh, major it was for the KFC brand. And just to give you a, a sense of what that was saying, what was very interesting about the results was, yes, there, were, there was an impact in terms of what people were thinking, but what was very interesting, when you looked at the people who were regular visitors uh, to KFC stores, and in particular a younger male skewing demographic, they were aware of the scandal. They were aware of you know, perhaps it was having a short-term impact on how they perceived the brand, but in terms of their likelihood to continue to use KFC and visit KFC, that was relatively unaffected. So the indication was that uh, you know, within 24 hours, we were able to get a measure of the fact that this did seem to be a short-term blip, even though, and you might have picked this up from one of the, the graphics before, even though the share price of Yum Brands, the, the, the holding company for KFC, was being affected. So it was a very important piece of information for uh, the client who was trying to understand what the impact was, and both fast turnaround and very relevant for uh, a sort of timely, uh, active news item. The third case study I want to talk through is about Asia leading the way, and there's probably two approaches to, to, to this. One is that, you know, from a respondent perspective, we think that respondents here, yeah, it may be true that respondents elsewhere are very mobile savvy, but our view is that from the perspective of trying to run mobile research, that we've got a very receptive audience 
of respondents and consumers here in, in, um, in Asia. And also from the perspective of the clients, our view, and this may be slightly contrary to some of the things that have come up earlier in the day, our view actually is that clients are pretty responsive and pretty open to trying mobile as a, as a platform and actually do see the benefits. Uh, so it, it, our experience has not been that we're doing this long, slow trudge of trying to persuade people of the benefits of mobile. Actually, when we talk through uh, the, the mobile platform, clients get it. Often they're coming to us because they already get mobile and they really already understand it. And so our, our view is that actually from a client perspective, Asia is very well placed to lead the way rather than follow. Um, and you know, just to touch on the, the, the respondents, um, this is from a uh, wave two of a, uh, a wide-ranging uh, study that we, uh, that, we, uh, that we carry out with uh, a number of respondents, about 1,000 respondents in a number of countries around Asia, looking at mobile media consumption. And I'm just gonna go quickly through a number of indicators that from a respondent perspective, they're totally engaged with mobile. I'm conscious that there have been similar sorts of slides put up, so effectively I am making the same point that actually consumers here, they're engaged with mobile, they understand it, they get it, um, and it has changed their mobile habit, their media consumption habits. You know, so in terms of overall media consumption, you can see already mobile's right at the top of individual levels of, of minutes of consumption of media um, in, in a given day, and that's from across Asia. And actually when it comes to um, uh, when it comes to sort of key activities like their entertainment or where they get information or their communication, for mobile web users, once they start to be mobile web users, mobile becomes the preferred medium uh, for, for those key activities. And finally, sorry, uh, additionally, when we look at this wave of mobile web usage, and we can see uh, on the charts here, uh, uh, you know, we ask the question about you know, do you consider yourself effectively to be an early adopter? And what we're seeing that from Asia as a whole, it's actually just as likely to be regular consumers these days. It's not really about early adopters. And in fact, as you can see with some markets, really it's quite a, a traditional, sort of a, a almost gen pop um, profile that, that, that we're seeing. When we ask people about where they are, and this is a particularly important point, I think, when it comes to how mobile can be best used in a research context. Uh, it's about downtimes. It's about little bite-sized moments and people snatching those bite-sized moments during their day. So waiting for something, 89% of people are saying across Asia, that's when they use mobile. So it's not surprising, I think, because anecdotally, we see that happening. I've seen it happening during this talk. But it happens, and you know, I think that for, uh, you know, for a, from a research standpoint, from a plat research platform perspective, that suggests that creating a product and creating a, a way of engaging consumers in a way that fits with how they're using the device makes a lot of sense. I think the, the, the final point from our, our regional look at, uh, at, at mobile media usage is to say that certainly in Asia, Typically, more than half of people are used to multitasking already. So again, I think anecdotally, we see this. We see it in our own behavior. But uh, you know, when we look across all the markets, we're seeing a lot of um, you know, multitasking just as a matter of course, as a part of the regular day. So if that's what Asian consumers are doing, um, then what are we doing to access and understand and, and use that information? I would say, you know. Are we doing something specific, something unique to mobile, or are we doing something that is really regurgitating the research that we've always done? From a, a client perspective, I said that we have a pretty bullish view about how clients view mobile. And our view is that they're probably more ready than uh, perhaps clients in many other parts of the world. They're certainly ready. And you know, part of that is, to, uh, is due to your clients here, I think, are open to maybe challenging the perceived ways of, of doing things. A lot of them maybe are relatively new uh, to, uh, to running uh, research of any sort um, and re certainly ready to uh, try to explore different ways, especially if those different ways deliver good value for money and, more importantly, deliver good insights. 
I think from, you know, if you look at any of the projections for the industry as a whole, almost all of the growth for the sector is in this part of the world. So it also suggests that, you know, global market growth is pointing here and is laying a good platform for mobile to be uh, really at the forefront. I think finally, in a lot of markets, what we're seeing is that the infrastructure uh, lends itself to, uh, to mobile in a way that, again, perhaps doesn't exist in other places. So to take the, uh, the, the context of China, if you're uh, one of the big FMCG brands in China, your core battleground is not typically China, uh, is not typically Shanghai, Beijing. Your core battleground is tier three cities, tier four cities, and beyond. And those are exactly the places where the logistics of running uh, research by other means is quite challenging. The logistics of running research by mobile in those places is actually quite good, relatively. So I think in closing, I would have a, a bit of a call to action that Certainly, the indicators are there that, at the very least, mobile is on its way to becoming a mainstream, um, altern a, a mainstream part of the, um, the, the market research spectrum, uh, if not on the way to becoming the next big thing. I think from, from our perspective, there are some things that we would see as being key to making sure that that process continues. Uh, certainly, from you know, looking at the types of insight that we're generating, I think it's all about being open to not just regurgitating what we've always done, but thinking about genuinely new ways to, to gather insight and what that insight might look like. I think it's also about designing from the ground up for mobile. It's not about force fitting the research uh, that we've always done into a mobile platform. Um, I think our view is that Asia actually can lead the way on this one. It isn't really about Asia uh, waiting for North America and Europe to do what it's going to do and then copying it. I actually think Asia could be and should be at the, the forefront of it. And finally, I think it is about taking action now. It's not about sort of waiting to see what happens. Um, so with that, I'm going to say, um, you know, I'm Paddy. Uh, Colin is, is over there as well. Uh, thank you very much. And uh, if you have any questions, that would be great. Thank you, Paddy. I'm going to kick off with a very quick observation and then a question. The, the observation is I think you were very kind when you had a picture of how many people using the mobile phone in the bathroom to have them showering. Um, unfortunately, I'm not sure that's what they're doing in the bathroom <laughs> when they're using their mobiles, which is perhaps one of the reasons we don't share mobile phones as much as we used to share the old-fashioned sort. Our insight didn't stretch that far. <laughs> um, you say customers are ready, and uh, my question back would be, are you talking about insight managers working in multinational companies, mm -hmm. or are you talking about other people inside customers? It's, it's a great question. I, I think certainly some of them are. Uh, I think I would say that there's a category of more progressive insight managers who are already thinking about mobile, some of whom are you know, thinking that intuitively this, this mobile thing is something they've got to get their heads around. They haven't quite figured it out yet, so they're in experiment mode, and that, that's fine. Um, but I also think that part of what we're saying is that the product and the, the idea of deploying mobile and deploying short bite-sized surveys um, really isn't just about the insights managers. And it could be strategy teams, it could be corporate finance teams, it could be people doing due diligence, people who need fast turnaround. It isn't always just about the insights manager. So yes, some of them are. Some of them, quite honestly, are, are, are not that, you know, thinking about mobile yet but it's also about a different group of people within an organization. I can certainly see a PR manager who is looking at a problem story, saying, oh, I could contact the Insight team and go through all that process, or actually I could just ring you up and ask you to ask this one question, get the answer back before I've even got the home phone number of the Insight manager. Exactly. I mean, crisis management, we think, is, is a, a, an absolutely kind of uh, for burning case for you know for using uh, mobile and deploying it effectively. Questions for Paddy? We have uh, one at the back over there. Uh, thanks for the presentation. My name is Arman. I'm with Margasoft, and uh, uh, you touched a very important point, which is uh, which is mobile surveys shouldn't repeat, and they open completely new opportunities. 
And going back to your case study number two, related to KFC scandal. So because of the speed, which is crucial advantage of mobile, mobile um, did actually part of your survey had an element of calming down? <laughs> and it was just pure measuring what's the impact. Because, I mean, it's not, because it's, it gives an advantage of a speed reaction, uh, it's also a new way of looking survey and action as a one element. So did it have, did you use that or not? Well, it, it's a good question. It, it, the answer is no, in this particular case we didn't, but I think that our approach would be that actually you can run it on a regular basis. So it, the, the, the setup time is very straightforward. You'd effectively be repeating similar questions, so you can deploy it very easily to repeat the survey on a, you know, after two days, three days, a week, a month. And, and share information as well, which is like... Uh, well, I mean, in this case, it would be client, uh, you know... Deciding, uh, to, yeah. To, you know, for the client. But you'd be able to, um, you know, get a measure of, you know, for a, similar, uh, for a similar respondent group, you know, how are things trending over time. I mean, what we were trying to do with the questioning or with the, the, how the questions were structured was really give an indication of, yeah, okay, had people heard about the scandal? Were they impacted today by it? But then it was rounding out those questions with a, over the next six months, do you see yourself you know, returning, you know, going back to KFC again? And so it was already giving some indication. But to be, to be fair, you could go out and repeat that and, and ask people on a, you know, in a, on a different surveying occasion, maybe one week or two weeks later. Thank you. Just sit with that. Oh, no, let's. Sorry. Hi, uh, Paul from Confirm It in the UK. Obviously, the immediacy of getting that information back is crucial. Um, so what technique do you use for reaching out to the respondents? How do you trigger them to give that information to you? Sure. So uh, it, there, there are a number of different ways that, that, that we do that. So for example, with the, the KFC piece, um, that was using an existing panel that had already been, uh, uh, that had already opted in and were active panelists for us. So uh, you know, we, we would then reach out, and in this case, we'd reach out via SMS to trigger the survey. Um, in other cases, we can work with partners to do more river sampled recruiting. So we, if, people, if we don't have people on a panel, uh, we can uh, use different approaches to, uh, to bring people in. Yeah, I just wanted to say, it's not just email that you're using, so it will be something like an, an SMS or something to, to trigger that immediacy. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Okay, thank you. Uh, question is regarding uh, the way you reach them, uh, since it's a very aggressive turnaround time which you have noted, mm -hmm. uh, you are using only web as a medium or app-based approach is also looked at. That's a, that's a good question. And, and just in terms of the, the turnaround time, I would say that um, you know, certainly that's our objective to, to do it, and there are, there are more and more cases where we are doing it. It isn't always 24 hours, but that's where, what we're aiming towards doing. Um, now, in terms of app versus, versus browser, I think uh, certainly we, we would see over time benefits to us introducing apps for you know, other purposes because it adds extra functionality. Uh, but in terms of getting widespread distribution for the, uh, for the content, um, we send an SMS with an embedded link, it opens up in the browser and it works across the full spectrum of, of phones that way. So what's the typical length of that? Because you again mentioned bite size, so. Sure, yeah, so bite sized for us is, you know, typically it's taking three minutes, four minutes to, uh, some, you know, often less to do a survey. Um, we find that you know, somewhere in the six to 10 questions zone is what you can get through in, in that time. We have done less, we have done more, uh, but what we try to do is focus it on the length of survey that we know is gonna get maximum engagement and completions and so on. Um, without making it sort of unwieldy and, and you know, people with sore thumbs not liking us very much. And since you mentioned you have talked to a lot of progressive managers, are they also looking at multimedia inputs? Uh, you mean within the surveys? Uh, from the surveyors like a voice or a image? Yes, uh, yes they are. And you know, certainly in terms of the platform, it's, it's able to, uh, to handle images. Video is um, particularly in uh, in emerging markets in Asia is more problematic because of data costs and so on. Um, so what we are focused on is a range of question types, and the question types include you know, a, a spectrum of closed-ended, but also open-ended, and then also some image-based um, questions as well. Thanks. Any other questions? OK, this is the, the last question of the day. 
this pankaj here from uh, millard brown did you have any issues around the representativeness of the sample uh, from a client's perspective we have heard a lot about that uh, earlier in the day right. so in, in in these case studies or in general in your discussions with clients yeah. uh, did you f <coughs> you know get that i, mean, I actually uh, i mean i think that um, our experience has generally been not really as in we've been able to deliver the the, the samples that clients are are looking for um, and I think part of that is the, the dynamic of um, you know, people using mobile and using mobile as their primary um, device for going online, so outside of tier one and two cities, for example, which is a bit different, I think, from, say, Europe or North America. So that it, it tends to influence the data, but it helps us because it's a, it, it helps us be able to you know, deliver quite a representative geographic slice and, and demographic slice across markets. Thanks. Thank you very much, buddy. Thanks, you're welcome.